In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly model some joinery for the purposes of visualization. So I'm not going to get it very detailed and very accurate in terms of technical documentation, but just something quite simple. This is the freehand sketch under that we're tracing in blue. I'm going to use a red pen at the moment. The red pen doesn't mean anything. Hopefully it just makes it easy for you to see. I'm going to draw a line, a horizontal line, and what I will do is just line it up here with this column. So I'm just going to give myself some grid lines. One simple way to know an offset, if I want this to be offset a particular distance, with my line tool, of course this could work with the wall tool as well, but I'll just use lines at the moment. I'm going to use my offset constraint. Draw the line against the wall, and then it will offset to whatever number I want that to be. Let's make this 900. The next thing we'll do is to draw an arc. Again, I'll use a red arc and I will base this on a center point. So there's different ways we can do it. We can do it as a three point. In this case, center point is going to be the best. And let's again assume, it's going to be slightly different to what we see here. Let's assume that we're actually after a semicircle rather than uh, more of a crescent shape. If it just looks completely wrong, we can always change it later. So if it was a semicircle, this is the result that we get. So it's slightly bigger, taking up some more space. If we determine, no, that's not going to work for what we want, then we can make it a crescent. If we're making a crescent, how much are we reducing it by? It would be nice to actually have a figure on that one. So I'm going to reduce it by 300 millimeters. So I'll select it. Click on this point. Any midpoint doesn't matter. And then I'll stretch that. And so we started with a, a true arc. And we see that it's now a true arc, but the center point has moved. The center point is no longer on our line. That's fine. It's, we're not making it a, a fake arc, or I guess the, uh, an ellipse would be a more technical term, or we're not using the spline to which creates multiple arcs in segments. We're still using a true arc, it's just the center point is slightly off of this line. Great. Now we've got a, a basis for what we're doing. Now I want to offset this arc to give us a thickness or a, a depth of the bench size. So I could go to my line tool or my arc tool, both will work. I'll choose my offset, magic wand, holding spacebar, left click, and then I can offset this equally. So we'll set this first one at 450, and then we'll do the same thing again. We'll just use this outside one again. It doesn't matter if I could have used the new one, and we'll go all the way in to make this now 900, which means each is being set at 450. We've got some overhanging lines. We don't need some of these anymore. We can delete these lines. They were just references. We can delete that one. That was basically a reference. And I can use my command or control button to trim these extra bits. I don't need that anymore. And I don't need this anymore. So now we've defined with a little bit more geometry, a little bit more dimensions, mathematical the shape that we're trying to recreate. And it's always helpful to be an Archicad to be able to rationalize a sketch design to make it work in a more uniformed manner. So we've got a place to start. Now we need to draw in the benches. I'm going to use a slab tool. When I go into my slab settings, how thick do I want that to be? Let's make the bench based on a thickness of 50 millimeters at the moment. We could increase that later if we want to can be structural, concrete, just for now. I'm not really, again, concerned about the section. I'm just trying to create something in floor plan, something that we can then see in 3D. So for visualization purposes, we can always change its structure later. How high do I want it to be? Generally, if I'm talking about a bench top, I'll use it like a normal floor slab, and I'll be basing the reference plane on the top. So I want the outside to be a height of 1200 going down 50 millimeters and so I can so I can see and so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to add in a 25% fill and this is fine a bit of a gray fill with the background translucent so when I magic wand you can see that it's actually there I can do the same thing and this time I'll reduce its color so you can see that they're different and I'll make this one 900 magic wand, so it's there. Once I've drawn these slabs, I no longer need my lines or my arcs. So I can now 
select those. If you select the wrong thing, hold the tab key and that will toggle between the elements. Holding shift to select all those, so I've got all of those, I can delete them if I no longer need them. Do I want the outline to be dash? No, I don't. Let's select both those slabs, go into the setting, and we'll change that to a solid line. I'll keep toggling back between 3D and 2D for you, just so you can see what I'm doing. Let's have a look at these in 3D. So we've got two slabs, they're hovering, they're not connected to the ground, so the next thing we need to do is to create something vertical in order to be able to join these to the ground. Let's go back to our lobby and have a look at how to do that. So what do I want to do? The, I could, the most practical tool would now to be to use a wall tool. With my wall tool, I want to make it Let's make it just again, something very simple, 100 millimeters wide. We don't want glass. Let's just make this timber. We want to start at ground level, at zero to this story, and we don't want it to be linked. We don't want it to go all the way to the ceiling, so we'll go not linked. And where do we want it to stop? We want it to stop at 1200, or 1200 minus, at the moment, 50, so 1150. Now when I draw this, which way do I want it to be defined? Maybe I'm not sure when I start. So let's start drawing. Do I want it to be solid or do I want it to be curved? In this case, I'll use a three-point arc. One point, two point, three point. So I might draw it and then go, oh, I didn't really want it to be that orientation. I actually wanted the timber to be on the inside. I can just flip that and that will turn it around. I'll leave it this side for now. You might decide, oh, I didn't want it to end that way. So how could we end this better? Let's change this to a straight line and just take that to the midway point. Let's flip. So that ends a little bit nicer. There, there's a lot of different ways we can play with this, adjust it, make that work. For now, that's all I wanted to achieve. All right, let's have a look at this in 3D. Is that achieving what I want? Yes, that's fine. At any point I could say, mm, 50 mil, not too sure about that. It's looking just a little bit thin. I want it to look a little bit stronger. Let's make them 100 millimeters instead. And so I could always then just adjust my wall height. Let's group them together while we're in 3D. And say 1100. Now when we go back to the lobby, I don't really want to see these walls, so what I can do is say display order center back. And then of course this slab, I put it on as a 25% cover fill. If I now change that to a solid fill or an empty fill, make the background white, that's going to hide that as well. So now we don't see the wall structure behind. There's a multiple different ways I could do that. If I wanted to see it, let's now change this back again and we'll select this wall and we'll go into the floor plan settings. And in the outline, let's now change this to a small dash. Any of these options works, depending on what we want to see. And now we've got our piece of joinery built just using very standard ARCHICAD objects or tools such as slabs and wall. And the point, partly the point of this video is to show that a slab is a horizontal surface. A wall is a maybe a vertical three-dimensional object and it has a thickness. I could have made this out of a slab as well. The wall just allowed me to give it a thickness and to be able to then adjust that thickness very easily. So there's a lot of different ways that we can work. Hopefully this has been helpful.